Hey guys, welcome back to another week of What's For Dinner. This week's theme is going to be large family dinner ideas on a budget. So this past week, we actually had some extra company. We had a lot of my family over, so we had extra mouths to feed. So a lot of these dinners make a huge batch of food and they're all pretty budget-friendly meals. So as we get into the holiday season, a lot of times there's extra meals to feed, but you're still trying to stick to a budget. So I think these meal ideas will really help you guys out. If you are new to my channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. I would love to have you. I do a new what's for dinner every single Sunday, lots of crock pot meals, meal prep, and other food related content. So if that is something that you're interested in, make sure you are subscribed, but let's go ahead and get into all of these dinner ideas. For this first dinner, I'm making a super easy lasagna recipe. This really feeds a crowd, so it's definitely a good one. So I'm just starting off with a pound of lean ground beef that's already cooked up and ready to go. I'm just adding in about a tablespoon of some minced garlic. I'm letting that cook for about 30 seconds just until that garlic is really nice and fragrant. I like to keep my sauce super simple, so I just throw in one jar of spaghetti sauce. I'm also adding in about half a cup of water and just shaking that around in the jar. I don't pre-cook my noodles, so you want to add about half a cup of extra water. And then I also am adding in one can of diced tomatoes. I like to add a little bit of extra seasoning here, just some Italian seasoning, salt and pepper, garlic powder, that sort of thing, but I keep it really simple. And then I just let this come up to a simmer for a couple minutes until it's heated through. I also do like to add about a teaspoon of just some regular sugar to cut some of the acidity from the diced tomatoes. You definitely don't have to do this, but I prefer it this way. Now moving on to prepping my cottage cheese. I do like to use cottage cheese instead of ricotta. It's just a personal preference, so that's what I'm using. I'm just using one whole container and I'm spooning that out into a bowl. And then I'm just cracking in one egg. I add in about half a cup of some shredded Parmesan, a little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper, and then a, probably about a teaspoon of some dried up parsley. And then I'm just gonna mix all of that together. Now if you like ricotta cheese, just go ahead and replace the ricotta with the cottage cheese and that will work out just fine. Now we are ready to actually prepare our lasagna. So I always spray mine with a little bit of some nonstick spray. And then I just put a small amount of sauce in the bottom of my nine by 13 pan. Now these are the oven ready noodles. I used to always pre-cook them, but this is honestly so much easier to make lasagna this way. I find that boiling lasagna noodles is such a pain. So definitely go for the ones that you don't have to cook beforehand. And then I'm just taking about half of this cottage cheese mixture and that's gonna go right on top of my lasagna noodles and then I'm just gonna layer it up with the sauce and some mozzarella cheese. I just repeat this process for two layers and this is the perfect size lasagna for our family and it feeds so many of us. It's a really hearty recipe. So we get probably a good three dinners out of this, probably even four honestly. So if you have a large family, this is a really good affordable option, especially if you can get your ground beef and your cottage cheese on sale. It's definitely a really good hearty option and it's definitely a family favorite of ours. So if you've actually never tried making a lasagna from scratch, definitely give this one a Shot. It's super easy. A lot of people think lasagna is hard, but especially if you get the noodles that you don't have to cook beforehand, it just makes it so much easier. I just covered this up with some tin foil. I bake it for about 45 minutes at 375 degrees. And then during the last 10 minutes or so, I will pull that tin foil off and let it bake some more. If you want your cheese to be nice and golden, you can just broil it for a couple minutes. And this is honestly one of our family favorites. It's really affordable and a great option. 
Now we are moving on to this Colby and Monterey Jack spaghetti bake. This was a recipe that I found on Pinterest and it was really good. I'm just starting off by cooking up my chicken. So I just have about two chicken breasts here that I cut up into some pretty small pieces. I'm seasoning it with some onion powder, garlic powder, paprika, salt and pepper. I kept the seasonings pretty basic here and I just pan fried this until the chicken was completely cooked through. Once my chicken has completely cooked through, I'm heading over to my island and I just added everything right into the skillet. So this is two cans of cream of chicken soup. You're gonna want about two cups of sour cream. I know it sounds like a lot, but it actually is needed for this because there's quite a bit of pasta that we're gonna be adding. So just get that sour cream added right in there. And then we're also going to be adding in some seasonings, some minced garlic. I just added in about a tablespoon of minced garlic, about half a teaspoon spoon of black pepper and then I'm just mixing all of that together. For this recipe, you're gonna want about a six ounce bag of these French fried onions. I just use the Great Value brand. So I added in probably about half of the bag right into this mixture. I'm also adding in about a cup and a half of some Colby and Monterey Jack cheese and mixing all of that together before adding in my pasta. Now for my pasta, I'm adding in about 12 ounces of some cooked spaghetti. I just cooked this until it was al dente and I'm adding that right in there and getting it all mixed together well. Now it is time to add everything into the casserole dish. So I'm just spraying my pan with a little bit of olive oil and then dumping all of this pasta mixture right into there. This is super creamy and delicious. The recipe did also call for some spinach, but I forgot to pick that up at the store. So I just had to leave that out, but I'm just smoothing all of this out before adding on my cheese and the rest of the French fried onions. So I just layered it up with a little bit more Colby and Monterey Jack. You could definitely use a different cheese here if you wanted to, but this is what I had on hand. And then I'm also topping it with the rest of those French fried onions. I baked this at 350 degrees for right around 40 minutes just until all of that cheese was melted. The french fried onions on top were nice and crispy. This was definitely a really delicious meal, can feed a lot of people, and is a very affordable option. For this next dinner, I'm just making a stuffed bell pepper casserole. So this is just a different spin of stuffed bell peppers, but my family prefers it this way instead of actually stuffing the bell peppers. And it's also a little bit easier. So I'm just starting off with about one pound of some lean ground beef. And I really like to season this up well with just some salt and pepper, garlic powder, onion powder, as well as a little bit of chili powder. And I find that this is really good on the meat, especially in this recipe. So I'm getting all of that combined together before adding in my peppers. Now that I have all of that combined, I'm adding in my two peppers. I chose to use a yellow and a red pepper, as well as about one whole onion. And I'm just gonna let all of this cook together. Now, if you want your peppers to be a little more on the firm side, you can cook your meat first and then add your peppers after. But I like to have everything really nice and soft. So once everything was fully cooked through, I'm adding in a big scoop of minced garlic and just letting that cook up until it's nice and fragrant. Now the sauce is really simple. You're just going to want about a pint of some salsa. Mine was actually frozen, so I just pulled it out of the freezer. This is my fresh salsa that I love to make. And then I'm adding in a little bit of Tony's, some ground cumin. I'm sorry, I don't have exact measurements. I just add this to taste and based off of my family's preferences. But I just let all of this kind of warm up together before adding in the rest of my ingredients. 
For some extra flavor, I like to add in about a teaspoon of some Worcestershire sauce. I don't measure it, but I'm just giving this a quick mix together before adding in my rice. So when it comes to the rice, I always like to make mine in the Instant Pot. It's just my favorite way to make brown rice. You can also use white rice here if you prefer that, but I definitely like to use the brown rice just because it's a little bit healthier. And I also think it has a little bit more flavor. I will have the recipe linked down below that I use for making my brown rice. After all of the mixture has heated up, I'm adding in about a cup of some Colby and Monterey Jack cheese. I'm just letting that melt together. And then I am going to top it with a little bit more cheese right on top. And then this is gonna get baked right in the oven. I just pop this into a 350 degree oven for right around 20 minutes, just basically until that cheese is nice and melted. This was definitely one of my kids' favorites. For this next recipe, I'm sharing one of our all-time favorites. This is a tater tot casserole. I think it's more of a Minnesota thing or at least a Midwest thing. So if you've never tried this recipe, definitely give this one a shot. So I'm just starting off with two cans of cream of mushroom soup. I like to season this up a little bit with some garlic powder, some salt and pepper, and then I give this a quick stir together before adding in the rest of my ingredients. I like to add in one whole white onion. I just softened mine up in the microwave or you can also add this in with your ground beef while you're cooking that. But I had my ground beef all cooked and ready to go so I just softened it in the microwave. I also like to sneak in some mixed vegetables so I'm just adding in a big package of those. And then I did decide to add in some extra veggies so you can add a little bit more or a little bit less here. I know a lot of people don't even add vegetables into their tater tot casserole but I just really prefer it this way. I've made it both ways and I definitely like it this way better. So if I can sneak veggies in, that is perfect. And then I add in a little bit of some shredded cheese, mix that in and you are good to go for the filling. You're gonna want to spray a nine by 13 baking dish with some oil, and then you're just gonna spread that whole mixture right into the bottom of this pan and make sure that it's evenly spaced out. And then we're gonna be topping it with our tater tots, which is definitely the best part of this casserole. Now I will say I have made this with hash browns on top. I've made this with French fries. So you can do it a couple of different ways, but I just decided to go classic on this day and I spread tater tots all around the top. I baked this tater tot hot dish at 375 degrees for just about an hour. You can add a little bit of extra shredded cheese on top if you want, but I just decided to skip it on this night. And this is honestly one of our all time favorite classic Minnesotan dishes. All right guys, that is going to wrap up this week of what's for dinner. I really hope you enjoyed all of these large family meal ideas. I'm really curious to know what is on your meal plan this week. I'm always looking for extra ideas. So definitely let me know down in the comments below. Hit that subscribe button if you have not already. I would love to have you. I share a lot of food related content on my channel with a little bit of motherhood sprinkled in the mix. So if that is something you're interested in, make sure you are subscribed. But I will catch you all in my next video. Thanks so much for watching. Bye. As a young girl, the fields were mine We played hide and seek for hours Raised our shadows among the pines So offshore, playful and free Without a care